Hello again and welcome to the National Science Week documentary series from research to reality. I'm Jeff Garrett, Queensland Chief Scientist. Queensland's science and innovation sectors are at the forefront of discovery. Yet few people actually know just how important they are. We think the public should know, should know more, particularly young people who might be thinking about a future career in science and technology and its application. We know that many people are interested in science and technology and what it can deliver. We enjoy participating in events that are inspiring, interactive and relevant. This is why in August each year, National Science Week attracts more than a million people to events throughout Australia. Our story this week starts at the 2010 launch at QUT in Brisbane, where we spoke with my predecessor, Professor Peter Andrews, and QUT's Vice-Chancellor, Peter Coldrake, about the importance of inspiring fascination with science and technology. Today marks the launch of one of the most important campaigns on the Australian calendar. National Science Week is an important celebration. Our mission is continuous from year to year, day to day. And that is to encourage Australians young and old to continue developing their inquiring minds and to inspire future generations to indulge in the amazing STEM that Queensland and Australia has to offer. I'd like to now introduce you to our first speaker, Professor Peter Coldrake, Vice-Chancellor of Queensland University of Technology. In addition to being an advocate for the advancement of tertiary education in Queensland, Peter is also an accomplished researcher, holding no less than two Fulbright scholarships and is widely published in the fields of higher education policy and practice. Uh, I think we've got a number of challenges that we have got to meet. Um, as someone who doesn't um, practice or know much about any of these, um, perhaps I can provide some gratuitous advice and certainly as VC of QUT sort of signal our intent to try and contribute to the addressing of some of these issues. But firstly, I guess, and obviously we've got to make the science disciplines interesting and particularly interesting to young people. Science has been seen to be hard. Um, it's seen um, to be rarefied. It's seen to be uninteresting and I think oftentimes it's taught by older folk. Universities themselves are undergoing huge demographic change in their workforce. But I think more to the point, we've got to actually look at the paradigms um, through which or the prisms through which science disciplines are introduced. This is what we call the linear progressions, which is supported by National Science Week, QUT Science and Technology Faculty and the Institute of Health and Biomedical Innovation. This digital exhibition aims to create discussion around image production as a creative outcome within science. Through exploring the inherent aesthetic qualities of scientific images, it is hoped it will encourage scientists to consider undertaking conscious intervention in the creation of images. Erica Seacom is a visual artist who is based in Canberra, and this is an extract from her work, Nanoplastica. Erica works at the ANU Department of Applied Mathematics XCT facility, where they are conducting pioneering research in the field of X-ray microscopy. The department includes physicists, chemists and mathematicians engaged in research of an experimental and theoretical nature. For this work, Erica used X-ray facility to take static scans of a skeleton of miniature plastic toys. What you can see is data from a miniature plastic octopus and a lobster that were collected from a brand of novelty chocolate. Each toy is no bigger than three centimetres. Rather than using real insects, Erica deliberately chose these ready-made objects to challenge our understanding of what is natural and what is artificial. Erica is one of a growing band of artists in residence within scientific communities. Collaboration between the arts and sciences has the potential to create new knowledge, ideas and processes beneficial to both fields. Artists and scientists approach creativity, exploration and research in different ways. 
When working together, they open up new ways of seeing, experiencing and interpreting the world. He's a great advocate and a great continuing advocate and a great mentor and friend, Peter. What's most exciting to young future scientists in Australia is the opportunity, as Peter said, to change the world. Um, and I think somehow uh, for us in getting that message across to young scientists, we have to equally change the system, if you like, or the delivery, what we're telling them. Queensland science is emerging at a pace. You know, in the last 10 years, the number of scientists in Queensland, researchers in Queensland, has grown from 8,000 to 18,000. And those people are clustering in a number of areas. Some of them are traditional scientific uh, areas, such as agriculture and mining, both of which continue to be hugely important, and others in either new areas where there's been a major investment, such as in all of the new biotechnology institutes, or in areas where you can see real expertise in Queensland that's going to be competitive around the world, like in uh, tropical, uh, tropical research across the board, be it agriculture or health or environment or whatever else, ecosystem stuff. You know, Queensland researchers and Queensland in general would have easily the best uh, uh, knowledge of tropical ecosystems around the globe at the moment. And that's about to be vastly increased by the new uh, opening of the new Bogo Road uh, Research Institute that'll bring people from CSIRO and state government and universities, all of them in, interested in ecosystem research.